Good evening, my brothers and sisters. This is Grace Changes Everything, part 18. I hope it's better quality. I'm now recording on my computer, where before I was recording um, live stream. Today is the 2nd of September, uh, 2021, Saturday. It's been an awesome day. Saturday is my favourite day of the week. It's also Sabbath by the law uh, of the, the law of the Sabbath was originally Saturday, and uh, but I I don't live by the law. I live by the spirit of love, and when you're in Christ's righteousness, uh, the law is fulfilled through Christ, and we are made whole and perfect in the body of Christ. And uh, I don't believe you have to be part of a seven-day Adventist church or a Saturday attending church to be saved. I believe we are saved uh, from having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and by accepting the gospel that Paul preached as a message for us Gentiles. And it's known as grace. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 15, 1 to 4, that Jesus Christ died, Jesus Christ was buried, and Jesus Christ rose again on the third day accordingly to the scriptures. And to keep this in memory, and ye shall have eternal life. That's it. It doesn't mention commandments, laws, though that will result when we're in the body of Christ we're made whole and perfect and in Christ's righteousness we are living the Lord's and we are not sinning then and our rags of righteousness is accounted it's not filthy rags then so not one jot or jittle of the law has been done away with except animal sacrifice so the law the Ten Commandments everything is still uh, operational but it's not by our own righteousness but in Christ's righteousness when we try to do it ourselves in the fallen body of Adam and Eve the state of the mind the intellect the will the emotions and the ego <clears throat> we are uh, we are uh, what's the word fallible uh, we are in the fallen condition and uh, we can hardly ever overcome <clears throat> let alone sins we can try nothing wrong with trying it's still a better choice than um, let's say sitting at a pub and drinking all day um, people who strive to keep the commandments in their own efforts and in the fallen body of Adam and Eve can still be blessed because of the purity of their heart um, having charity and love for others but you'll notice that people who uh, judge, gossip, backbite, slander, run others down, um, it's all operating in the soul, in the fallen condition, and we are prone to judge, soul judging another soul, and we get hurt, we get damaged, we get uh, dis disturbed, we, uh, when our testimonies are challenged, we get angry, uh, the bubble can burst, and uh, we're not always at peace. So when we know the truth, the truth shall set, set you free. So I go into spirit, which is higher level than the soul. And I experience that with my near-death experience. And I, I, I believe and I testify we have a spirit. But not all religions believe that. They believe we're just a soul. And we soul sleep until the resurrection or uh, the soul is eternal. I believe in soul and I believe that it will live on for a time hereafter and we will have to correct our negative karma, um, repent of any sins if we have not repented by changing our mind while in mortality. Okay, We're not here repenting of sins because the Bible says nothing about that because we cannot in the fallen body of Adam and Eve. So when we enter into Christ, into the body of Christ, into his rest, into his grace, into his righteousness, 
uh, then we are not sinning because Christ is uh, fully alive. The living Christ is working through us. Good fruits will come forth and the bubble cannot burst. Our testimonies are strong and valiant in spirit. Okay, now there, were, there are many people who are valiant and strong in their soul and they bear their testimony um, of Christ and, uh, you know, but they get hurt easily. They get offended easily. Uh, they can even succumb to man, leadership, bishops, archbishops, leaders, uh, confessions. <clears throat> this is all soul trap uh, religious bondage. And then, then there are those who don't rely on religion, but they still live in soul. And they have very deep spirituality, which is a good thing. But then they, they go into new age, <clears throat> where all paths lead to one. And it's more likely to be a broad path than a narrow path to salvation. And they focus a lot on abundance and getting rich and being prosperous, believing that everything we have, which we, we do in our heart, we, we, are, we are, have the kingdom of God within us and we are all rich, but we can manifest things by having gratitude and faith and, and believing we already have it. And, uh, but as I said in other videos, this does not always work in third world countries or people are struggling to get rice. They give their last donation or tithing and um, they end up with nothing. It, it, it's, it's a struggle. So it's a Western world mentality, this law of abundance, this law of attraction. Um, sufficient for your needs, yes. Land, house, property, um, take care of family, you know, all that sort of thing, financial blessings, security. Uh, but in the ego, it, it wants, it wants, and it keeps on wanting, okay? And I've seen old people that have become filthy rich. They are grateful. Um, they, they're very positive and proactive. Um, and, but some of them, will, will, when asked the question, what is their three focus in life the three loves of life the first thing they say is it's like money attracting abundance having the, having it deserving it manifesting it then they, they they might say family next or they might say as this one guy named proctor i don't know his first name in the movie called the secret he said uh second he said he said money first if second was Generous generosity towards his workers all over the world because he's got companies and he gives them pay rises and everything. He's a very good boss. Okay, very good boss. And his family, he had to think about the third one. And he said, oh, yeah, family. Took him a while to think about it. That's prosperity. Um, it, it, it can be, yeah, prosperity gospel, prosperity beliefs. Um, I think it's a bit wayward. It does. It, it's not about money. It's about being humble. I don't say you have to be lowly to a point of misery, have nothing, and basically starve yourself to death and give to the poor. Um, if you don't love yourself, how do you love others? If you're feeling down and depressed and lowly and, you know, you're bicker. So that's not true humility anyway. That's just beating yourself up. And that's exactly what the devil wants because that's all negative. And then you've got the extreme of the proactive positive marketing and, the pyramid selling scheme and you've got it in uh, religions um, that dominate and rule with dogma rules and regulations all under the law okay so i live by faith al faith alone will save you however if you love the lord you will keep his commandments so by entering into christ's righteousness you are going to fulfill the law through christ and you're going to keep keep the laws and commandments Love one another, love your neighbor, love yourself. <clears throat> and you will great be in gratitude. You will thank him for all that you have. And in faith, you can ask. He will listen unto your petitions and through your faith, he will grant all the desires of your heart. Okay. And then that, that is predicated upon faith and obedience. And that obedience is in the body of Christ. So when we're living in that state of beingness, okay, it's a beingness. The doingness will come because to be a doer of the word 
firstly, we have to be in the, the beingness of it, the heart, not the head, not the mind, not the monkey chatter. All right. We're not at peace when, when, when we're living in the head. Um, of course, we slip out of the body of Christ and we go back to the fallen state, the body of Adam and Eve, and we will sin again. But we, we don't commit the serious sins. We, 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 um, we avoid the negativity of resentment, hate, uh, lying, cheating, gossiping, slandering, backbiting, racism even. All of that is in the soul trap. So anyone who calls himself a Christian is kidding themselves. All right? They can be religious, but they're not Christian. All right. So in my uh, religion, which I'm not part of at, at present, it's been, uh, oh my goodness, 21 years, 21 years since I've been uh, in the later day St. Mormon Church. And to my knowledge, they put works before grace. And every now and then you'll get a, an apostle or somebody high up in the church will preach, yes, grace is important and we, can, we climb up halfway up the ladder. We activate this grace, all right? We've got to earn it. No, that's not what the Bible says. It's a free gift. If we have to earn it, then Christ died on the cross for nothing. He died to give us a free gift of grace. The only effort we need to do is get out of bed, go to church, um, pay the bills, work, take care of marriage, those sort of efforts. Um, when we're in the spirit, it's, it's Christ doing everything. It's beautiful. When we're in the soul, we're struggling, we're striving, we're trying to overcome and never able to, and never arriving, never assured of salvation, always wondering if, uh, like the Calvinists will say, retrobates, uh, which they believe everything's destined, no matter how good you are or how bad you are, that God's got handpicked the ones going home and uh, it makes and it will trick you to make you think that you're righteous or good and still you're damned that that is ridiculous i have no idea how people can buy into that they have their own bible called the west cot and, and so another one which came after king james king james is the closest we have to the truth i know there's even it goes back even further but that's what we have uh, it's been around a long time and I stick with the King James Version, and I recommend you do too. Just to change a few words here and there can make all the difference. All right? So, brothers and sisters, um, I just bear witness and make this video short and let you know that in my spirit I have a love for humanity. I love my enemies. And I know that by pouring hot coals over them with love, uh, that vibe, that energy... Uh, that manifestation of Christ-like love travels in the air like radio waves and it reaches them, okay? Um, it, it's less likely to be a, to be a, under an attack when you're in spirit, unless it was God's will. When we're in soul, all right, and they are in soul, it doesn't matter if who thinks they're better than the other, higher or lower, the, the soul can attract trouble. We slip, we fall, we trip, we have accidents. All sorts of things happen. Then we blame God. We get angry. We wonder why all these things are happening. Because we're trapped in the soul. We are being religious. <clears throat> we are believing in a religious dogma of overcoming sins in the flesh, in the, in the soul. When the secret lies in overcoming it by entering in the body of Christ because it's called the finished works of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross, repented of all sins, past, present, and future. And when we trust him and we surrender our filthy rags of righteousness, which is which is pride and, and it's sin, and surrender all our fallen, uh, fallen body sins, and then, and then we're in the body of Christ, we're forgiven. We're forgiven of sins. Christ has already repented because all we have to do is change our mind. That's repentance. Trying to repent of sins in the soul body is a hard way and it's a lot of pain and struggling, moaning and groaning, sleeping on a bed and hours or whipping yourself on the back like the old monks, monks used to do. 
okay yes yes when we grieve the holy spirit we've got to we've got to we, we have a prick conscious we know we've done the wrong thing and then we make the choice to repent by changing our mind we we just get out of the body we get the hell out of the body of adam and eve and return to the body of christ but we have these three levels of human nature that will fluctuate because we're human okay the spirit the soul and the body or the flesh and creature I've mentioned this on my other videos the creature is part of us it's the lowest level I do not give all the credit to the devil because he doesn't have a body nor does his demons and when we're in a, a physical relationship with with a wife spouse or an, a, a, a faithful relationship where if there's no priest or anyone to marry you it's still considered a marriage because you have the intent to marry, but you just for some reason cannot be married. I don't think that's a curse sin. And God can use a happy marriage. So the creature will bicker if you try to kill it instantly. The Bible says to kill the creature. Yes, it doesn't work for most people. Metaphorically, it is a bit of a kick up the backside and it's to motivate you to make some changes. It's a process. All right. And the creature can die happily because it's a it's something that functions on the lower level and when you have a have a shitty day you've got a choice you can argue you can bicker you can run away you leave your wife and disappear um, or she may be in the bad mood you could come together be passionate be loving but you may not be holy you may not you're on the lower level and you can still make passionate love and you can still be a good husband um maybe a little erotic maybe a little bit lustful but lust without love is a cursed sin okay this is this is talking about a love foundation in a marriage or a union a union of two people faithful to each other committed as married all right intimately and everything but on the lower level you can have a, a relationship temporary with the creature which is the, the basic instinct and that'll get you through some very tough times and after a time it goes to sleep it's happy it's it's had its day it's burnt out and of course um the woman becomes the beauty and the man becomes the beast it's like beauty and the beast okay it's a bit of a romantic love story really but it has got a lot of overtones in it with lust and so forth but I would rather choose that in a relationship than totally ignore my spouse and think that I'm more holier than her or she's more holier than me and there's bickering and fighting going on. Now, this is all in my book I'm writing called The Three Levels of Happiness. It's very, very important. Christian couples, as Paul said, it's better to marry than burn, okay? But he never married. He was celibate. But those uh, who, who do not like being alone, who experience aloneness depression even suicidal um, they need to go into spirit and attract the right companion in your life in their life become evenly yoked in christ and lay the foundation out cover everything no stone unturned no stone unturned tell her everything and if she doesn't like it don't worry move on you must lead her in spirit not in soul she can lead in soul emotionally because woman who are not drug addicts who are actually good christian women are pure in heart especially if they've got charity right they can lead the man in the soul and govern over the creature and just to make sure creature doesn't get its way entirely and drag uh soul or spirit down to hell um okay but anyway man has his responsibility and his duty to, to operate from spirit if he's a true christian even if his soul's corrupted damaged hardened uh he might be a workaholic he might be just a, you know uh, not able to handle stress he might have anger management all sorts of things going on in the soul uh, disruption and his loving wife can actually uh, modify that and bring harmony into his soul but when it comes to spirit he can leave all right there's no sort of middle ground for a lot for a lot of people especially men they've been hardened they've been brought up to be tough um you know in in my culture uh women get treated like princesses men men are the slaves um, 
Men have to work. Little as a little kid, couldn't couldn't sleep in. Had to get out of bed. All sorts of things. Uh, my father always wanted a daughter. He wanted to spoil her and treat her like a princess. But I come along and and I had some severe health problems and I had a, a near death experience accident. Nearly died or, or kind of did, um, but not. My, I wasn't brain dead. And uh, he could never accept that I had some flaws. I even had head damage. I lost my speech. I lost my grammar, spelling. But yet I went on to university and I um, excelled in music and English literature and taught in third world countries, including mo in the Islam Muslim world, which was very tough. But what respect I got for, for uh, in the Middle East. All right. And I had a lot of things going on in the Middle East, um, opposition, which was which is hard enough to deal with because of, uh, oh, what can I say? They cannot drink alcohol. It's against their religion. So I, I'm a foreigner. Um, uh, because I was bored, I was there for two years teaching. I couldn't even find, it, find my church there at the time. Eventually I found the Born Again Church, but it was in their language. I think it was in Hindi. India or well, Pakistan, and uh, I enjoyed it, even though I didn't understand language. But I got bored sometimes, and I I got this job at the at the uh, what do you call it the expats uh, club, which is like where all foreigners gather if they want to have a drink, even including bad Muslims who like to have a drink. And they would hire me to go out to the uh, to the ocean and, and they would bury all the Heineken in on this in the sand and I had to bring them back to the to the uh, to the club because there's only one night a week you could drink and that was Thursday nothing on Friday and if you get and and I had a, a, a local with me a Pakistani and um, you know when you get caught over there with alcohol the poor old Pakistani or the young Pakistani get whipped and beaten and uh, I felt I felt bad because um, foreigners can get away with it, but, but the, the locals cannot. So um, anyway, I got many stories to tell, and I'll, I'll, ex I'll express all of that as time goes on. But when I came back to Australia, that was even worse because then I had a, a, a racist um, movement going on here that was against those marrying. Um, Foreigners, especially uh, dark skin, and uh, what's the other one? Uh, dark, <laughs> uh, dark skin, Asian, and Jews. <laughs> and um, around about that time, I got very seriously threatened because I was messing up the Australian identity. Um, look, when you hit forty in this country, Australia, woman. Don't want to look at you. Well, not not a younger one anyway. If it's ten years younger or whatever, they still want to go for the young, the young man. In fact, they prefer the man to be younger, maybe, because they're more handsome. But the Asian culture and other cultures from third world countries, they look on, they look into the character and they love you, for, respect your character, and you, it doesn't matter if you're ten years older or more. You know. And you're the patriarch, and you can lead. So you you better have the the truth within you. So you lead these these beautiful um, these princesses um, from India or Asia or wherever it may be. All right. Um. When when I was here and I was dating, I met this girl, um, Australian girl, and I had. Put in my profile is very adventurous, which I am. I'm a dirt bike champion rider of, of the past. Um, I've done a lot of adventurous things. You know, I'd be very good at speedway driving as well. Um, I, you know, those sort of sports. And she said, "Tomorrow I'm jumping out of an airplane. I'm going. Uh, what do you call it? Skydiving. Are you coming with me?" And I said, "No, I'm no, no, no I'm not." I'm not going to be jumping out of planes. It's not my thing. And she thought I was a coward. I thought, but you said you're an adventurous person. So anyway, I'll cut a long story short. Just broke it off instantly. If there was any love or respect, it was gone. All over that. This is this is the Western world. All about 
looking good, having the muscle, uh, have, being adventurous, as probably as adventurous as James Bond movies, jumping out of aeroplanes and all sorts of risky, daring things, which, you know, I was a daredevil. I, I, used, to, I, used, to, I used to jump with my bike over, you know, uh, I've been over cliffs and uh, 44 gallon drums and all stacked along in a row and the only thing I didn't do is jump through a hoop of fire <laughs> I haven't done that I would have done it <clears throat> I wouldn't mind anyway so um, what I'm leading up to is that Christ does not um, look upon you for for what you do for a job how you look anything in fact Jesus Christ didn't look anything extraordinary even though he was an extraordinary man supernaturally and and God and we're not going to be judged for anything like that. All right. So I I, I, I empathize with all you, you blokes out there, especially my age or even from 40, you know, for having a hard time trying to find a good, evenly yoked woman in Christ, living alone and depressed. And it's really hard and probably even turn to drugs because you're so lonely. It can happen. I'm, I mean, I'm not into illegal drugs. I'm totally against it. It doesn't work for me. Even if it became legal, I still wouldn't have it. All right, but but other things in moderation, medical reasons, uh, anything's better than suicide. <laughs> and it's not what goes in the body or what comes out of the body. So it's better to have a drink or a smoke than, than bump yourself off. <clears throat> but anyway, I try to go as long as I can. I try and stay in the body of Christ for as long as I can. And then I'll, I'll wake up and I can't move. I, uh, it's probably the damage from the accident. I, I get locked down. I can't pray, I can't read the scriptures, I'm locked. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's my biological nature, and, and if I get angry to the point of, yeah, <laughs> madness, entities will get in, uh, negativity and all that sort of stuff. And that's the same with the marriage. If you let anger in and hate in and start judging the lower levels, like you dirty, rotten sinner, I don't want you to act like that, you're my wife, I expect you to be holy 24-7, that's letting in the demons. Straight away, you're you're resenting, hating, judging. All right, so this is this is how the demons get in. Get negativity out of your life. Get hate out of your life. Get racism out of your life. Okay, be be a Christian. Okay, you don't have to be religious. Religious people can be racist. You know, there can be all sorts of um, gangsters and all sorts of things can be can be part of religion. I won't get into that. The history reveals itself. So my brothers and sisters, uh, I'm going to keep making these videos because I feel I have a, have a testimony and a mission in Christ. I'm helping my own people in Australia. I'm also helping people in my church, those who are pure in heart, um, really listen to this message of grace. And... They desire a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, not with man, not with the bishop, not with the prophet. Uh, a church could collapse tomorrow. Internet could be cut off. Satellite, communism, communism rules, one world government, cashless society, mark of the beast, all rejected and be be beheaded to be saved. We've got a lot of a lot of crap ahead of us. It was very frightening, very scary. But the Bible says to be at peace. And, uh, and and there could be some supernatural experiences along the way to, to comfort you before you get to that stage where off with your head because we are not supposed to take that mark. And though many will, and I, I you know, no one knows. They say, oh, no, I'm not going to take the mark. You don't know. They could kill your kids if you don't take that mark. And then you think, oh, I'm not going to let my kids die. You see, it could, be, it could change in an instant. So never be too sure of yourself in that respect, in the soul anyway. In spirit, just trust in the Lord. Don't try and work it out in your head because you won't have a head to work it out in the end. <laughs> that was a joke. Um, so so uh, <clears throat> be strong and uh, also be brave and leave comments. Um, I, I, I get a lot of likes. That's that's good. I have, I, I'm, I'm expecting criticism. Um I don't mind constructive criticism, but I won't tolerate hate or hate speech. I'll, I'll, I'll delete it or block it. 
But I, I wonder why uh, not so many people leaving comments. They must not be members of YouTube or something. Because because you have to be a member of YouTube to actually leave a comment. So they, they can watch the videos. Please leave a comment. It inspires others um, and gives hope as well. I will end this video. It's been 30 minutes. God bless you all. And I shall make many more in the future. This is Grace Changes Everything Part 18. Because I did make Part 17 today on my phone. It's still downloading. And so hopefully there will be two videos. Part 17 and 18 coming out. And if Part 17 does not come out. Uh, technically, then this will be part 17. But at the moment, it's part 18. God bless. Take care. And uh, keep and have have the faith, the hope, and the charity. And out of the three, the greatest is the love, which is charity. Love one another. Trust in the Lord. And enter into spirit. And let spirit lead over soul and body, not the other way around. And I testify of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.